We're going to meet uh, Susan and uh, Jonathan uh, Lip. At least Susan's here. Here she and is. Here she comes. Now, come on, woman of the Susan. hour. Hi, everybody. I'll play the part of Jonathan. Is that okay? <laughs> no. <laughs> it is absolutely not okay. So what happened? Give, take us way back, 32 years ago. You guys are sitting around. You're in the theater business, as I recall. Or I were you? was. I was in the theater business. Yeah, and you were in the theater business, and Jonathan was in the recording business. And who said what to whom, and how did it all come about? I just decided to walk into the studio one day and get a free uh, uh, PSA made. And for your uh, theater group. For the theater. Yeah. You know, I did, that, I, I did everything free at, <laughs> for the theater. I mean, we had a $60,000 budget for the rep, so and that included paying me, paying the director, paying technical people. I believe I was on the receiving people. end of some of that groveling in, the, in those days. <laughs> I, think you, I think you were. Uh, so I, I walked into the studio and said, you got to do this, but I didn't know Jonathan. So, oh, you didn't even know him no, at that no, time? No, no, but I'd never been in a studio before. Oh. So it was my first shot in the studio ever, and they had the most amazing stuff there. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Things that could play with voices and do things that were just fabulous. And I w went into the studio, and I started playing with all the equipment. And I left and went back to the theater, and I had forgotten the PSA that <laughs> I came for. So I, I called Jonathan's partner, Rick, and I said, is there anybody coming out to the theater tonight? I forgot the thing that I came yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. And he said, yes, my partner, Jonathan, will be there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I said, who's your partner? He said, he's the guy that was the engineer on all the equipment that you were playing with. Ah. Uh, so <laughs> I hey, said, you don't? the cute one with the, the mustache. <laughs> the cute one with the mustache. Yeah. He had well, a long, cute guys long. do have mustaches. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the really cute ones. <laughs> Jonathan has not got a mustache any longer. Um, but... Well, let's get his side of the story. Let's bring here Jonathan on the set here. This Jonathan? is a live webcast. We can do this. Scoot over. I'll okay. make some room. Now, I don't know how, how to quite say this politely, but apparently she says that you hit on her. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. We're just he, kidding. He did. But this, he did. you were, you were part did. of a recording yeah. studio. Yes. And you volunteered to deliver the PSA. That's where we are with the story. Absolutely. But how did the And I asked her for a date. All right, we're going to fast forward. You're married. And yet. she said no. <laughs> where was the first germ of the seed for Full Compass? 1971, I was, I had a friend who wanted to build a recording studio, so I went to the local electronics dealer to get some information for him, because I knew more than he did, which wasn't much, and um, when I left the store, this guy accosted me in the parking lot and said, uh, I've got, I'm a part of a group of people who want to build a recording studio, and we'd like to meet your friend, because maybe he has money. <laughs> well, it turned out my friend didn't have any money, but I got involved with the group, and I became number four of the four people who started Full Compass Sound Studios in 1971. Yeah, and here we are. I think this is the fourth Full Compass building I've been in, at least. This We've is been the fifth. The fifth? Well, maybe yes. I missed one, or I can't <laughs> count, or I'm getting older, a combination of all those things. Anyway, Jonathan and Susan Lip, what a terrific thing. You guys got to be just proud, as anybody can be, proud parents of this wonderful we are. Uh, spot. And this webcast is truly revolutionary and, and uh, truly, uh, as they say, cutting edge. Welcome back to the Full Compass Technology Expo. You know, a little more than 32 years ago, Jonathan Lipp actually ran a recording studio. Susan Lipp ran a theater company. Uh, but uh, then these 30-somethings, well, well, something happened to the 30-somethings, I guess you could say. They had an idea. It was time to change. And uh, what if, they asked each other. Well, what if? We've got them here to find out the rest of it. I mean, I could make this up, but it's too great of a story to make it up on my own. How did this all happen 32 years ago? How did you two come together? Well, first, thing, <laughs> first off, I started the company about half a year before I, I met Susan. And it was not a very big company. We did $32,000 worth of business the entire first year. Mm -hmm. And But my idea was is that I was not making a good living as a recording engineer. I was enjoying it, but I wasn't making a good living. And I thought maybe I could make a better living selling stuff to other recording engineers who weren't making a very good living. So I started Full Compass Systems. And six months later, I met Susan. And I mean, I thought a store that sells electronic stuff had to be dirty with dust on everything, you know, and, and the floor clean once a month, whether you needed it or right, not, right. you know, that sort of thing. Susan had other ideas. I had very different ideas. My idea was to be able to walk into this place and clean it immediately, and then notice that it needed a lot more merchandise, and I merchandised it, and then I, continued and I started advertising because I had been in the theater business I was still in the theater business 
and it just was the same as filling seats. So we were filling a few more seats by doing mailings. Now, now do you have to pinch yourself sometimes? I mean, you're in your fourth building. This building fifth, fifth. is... This is our fifth building. Fifth building. Yes, fifth so building. Anyway. She was wrong. Fifth building. Fifth. <laughs> We're in your fifth building. This is a Cadillac facility by any any stretch of the imagination. You have to pitch yourself to say, holy smokes, what's happened over the 32 years? You bet. You bet. We can hardly believe it. I mean, when we see this place, and and but we're surrounded with probably the most phenomenal people. And I think that we could be in a Quonset hut as long as we have the people that we have. I don't know if you realize that this woman is one of our vice presidents and was made vice president just two days ago. And I guess that that plants that would be purple. Uh, probably. <laughs> it, it may not teal. even be purple. Teal. It might be <laughs> teal. Uh, we've we've always we love what we do. Mm -hmm. We all love what we do. The people that work here love what we do. Let me let me ask you this, Jonathan. A lot of people sell stuff. Yes. But my hunch is there's something behind the way you sell it that is behind your success. True or false? Absolutely true. Uh, every salesperson, everybody in the warehouse, everybody in purchasing, in credit, all the departments have a very simple mantra. Make the customer happy, make them want to come back, and make them want to tell their friends what a good experience it was. Mm -hmm. In other words, do the right thing. Right. And they're, they're more than just salespeople, they're, they're problem solvers. Yes. Yes. Yeah. They're all but very... We, uh, give them the, uh, prob the, we give them the ability and the freedom to solve the problem. We don't create a lot of bureaucracy. Where, well, I don't know if I can do this for you because I got to ask somebody else. Just do it. Make it right. Make the customer happy. Don't torture them when they've got a problem. Yeah, and you do little. You know. I mean, little things I consider big things, like the cafeteria. That's just fabulous. We but don't have a cafeteria. We, we have, have a, a restaurant. A restaurant. I beg your pardon. There is a lot of difference. Am I glad you're standing between the two of us? But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you have, have a, a restaurant. We have an she, executive chef. But you don't have to do that. Why do you do that? We do it because. We want our people to be the happiest people in the world, and we want them to stay forever, and most of them do. Yeah. We and keep a lot of people for, we have people that have been working for us for 20, almost 28 years, three for 25 years, many, many for over 20 years. I'd, I'd say our average is about 19, and that's primarily because we've hired a lot of new people. Right. Yeah. So we keep people, they don't leave. Mm -hmm. Be, and. And they're still trained. Our sales staff is trained every single well, day. Well, the technology changes all the time. Yes, we right. know that. So right. they have to. So you somebody know, learning who's is part of somebody who's been here for 25 years is still being trained four days a week. Mm -hmm. So that's all part of it. It's all part of it. So you had the great people. You had the great training. You had the great product. You have the great buying power. Right. And it all. Uh, and it I all? think I think most important is that there's so much love here. <laughs> I'm starting to tear up. I'm starting to tear up. Thank you, Susan and Jonathan. Thank you.